Good morning from Ocean City Airport and our flying adventures. It's all about the journey. Today's journey is my very first oil change. And I'm okay with changing oil. What I need to do is learn how to do that safety wire tie. So Steve is gonna be here to teach me how to do that stuff. I just wanna make sure that that's done correctly. Last thing I want is an oil filter backing itself off in flight. That makes for a really crappy day. So I got here a little while ago and uh, I'm here with the Ziva chick. I took off the top cowling and set it over here on the blanket. Now, yesterday, putting oil in this, when I was in Mount Pleasant, I used the wrong filler, the one that just like pops onto the oil court. And as I was lifting it up to put it in the filler tube, it popped off, dropped, got oil all over my shirt, all over the top cowling all over the side. So I just waxed all that with a cleaner wax. So that's done. I am right at 50 hours. I'm, a, I'm an, actually an hour over. Let's see if I can get this. Yeah, she's draining slowly, really slow. I forgot to plug my preheat on last night. So I plugged it in this morning for a couple, maybe an hour, hour and a half. And, um, that way I could get some oil drainage. But the main thing is getting that filter, excuse me, filter change and safety wire. I wanna learn how to do that. Changing oil is changing oil. I've done it for years on vehicles. I'm just too, uh, too fat, too old <laughs> to be crawling around doing that stuff. But I made up that little hose and I grabbed the kitty litter bucket that I had. And thankfully I have the uh, automatic drain plug. So I hooked the hose up to that, twisted it, and let it have at it. So I have my oil, my filter. I bought the new safety wire pliers. I even have some safety wire here somewhere. There you go. Right there. I got a, in this box is the oil filter so I can cut it. And while I was waiting for that to drain today, I took my little multimeter and started working on my tug. So, can you get your head out of here? Hey, back up. You're in view. I um, tested the batteries. They were dead last night. I, didn't, I couldn't push the plane in. Mary and I had to both push the plane in. So I unhooked everything and I tested each battery and of course they were really low. So then I hooked up the charger that's on my tug and it came on and the lights lit. I put it on, I can't get anything out of it. So I hooked up another charger that I had, but I had to separate the batteries. It's a 12 volt charger, so it's doing a good job. I'm just gonna charge them individually. So then I was gonna look at this. Well, Steve stopped by. He's gonna, like I said, show me how to safety wire. And uh, he said, you checked the fuse yet for the charging? And I'm like, no, it came on. I just bypassed that. I figured I'd check it if all else fails. Well, all else failed. Popped the fuse out, five amp, 200 and some volt, I forget. Anyway, it's burned. So that's why we're not getting a charge. So I'm gonna pick up a fuse today, get that done. So right now, just individually uh, charge each battery. So I'm waiting for this to drain. I forgot a one inch wrench. So Steve, Steve uh, ran over to the hangar. I think he's working on his dad's plane today too, changing the oil. So caught him at the right time so I can get a little lesson. Anyway, uh, I'll put a link down below to his channel. And uh, he does a lot of cool stuff, working on a lot of cars and trucks, you name it even a skid steer, and um, he's working on Chevy Bolt right now. So please check out his link when you can. All right, let me get started here. All right, Steve made the homemade oil catcher, oil catcher from a used quart of oil. 
Yep, that way, so when we pull the filter off, it doesn't uh, drain the oil all over. The funnest thing is, is trying to, just to wiggle it down, down in there. That's the funnest part. And I said that his link would be down below. His his uh, YouTube is King Dead Lego, so look for the link down below on uh, on my page, or in the comments, or in the description, or. Oh. Anyway, you look for. Just steal the light from you. I'm very good at that. Well, that's why I set my uh, I set my thing down on top of it. Come on, you gotta be. Able to this thing. Yeah, now I know what you go through when you record with one hand. Yes. It's well, not easy. Yeah. Now, and this thing's being difficult. Usually I could just wiggle these things down here, but it just wants to go on the wrong side of the prop cable to start with. There we go. That was a good one. Okay. All right. That is the. Uh, do you want that under that? I'll figure it out. I don't mean to blind you. No, you're good. Here, I'm going to put that right there. There we go. That should work good. Yes, I do. It's right behind my wing on this side. Are you kidding? I'm short. I have to use it for everything. Yeah, I know. I'm short too. We're good. We're like the same weight, so we're fine. Yeah, but you're so much more mobile because you're in shape and good weight. I'm just a fat old man that's broken down. <laughs> and, uh, I can kind of bend some days. Oh, you know what? Look at that. I just saw that. Uh, Look at that bare wire right there. Right here. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, that's okay. That's just the, the bonding wire. That's the ground wire that goes into this ground here. Huh. So that's not a big deal. That's probably... Did you already draw blood? Me? Uh, no. No, that's silicone. It's a chunk of silicone. I wouldn't be surprised if I did, though. I'm gonna drop this thing down. No, it doesn't want to go back up. See why I get annoyed some days? It some days? I would've cut that. I would've tried cutting it like a shovel. Yeah. Or the plastic bag. You ever use the plastic bag method? Yeah, I'm not Didn't very... like that? Yeah. There we go. That should work pretty good. All right. I'm going to get my first lesson here. All right. So now, once you get something to catch the oil, you can uh, find a nice place so you don't lose your tools. That's first, always a plus? Yeah. Um, if you cut the safety wire in like the middle here, uh -huh. your big problem you're going to run into is when you're loosening it because this chunk's going to get caught on everything. So, um, so cut it down low by the... Yes, unless you're going to be hanging it somewhere to drain. If you're going to hang it to drain, then you want some left on there. If you got a container to set it in, like a oil catch can where it's got a filter place, then it'll be fine. Um, but I'll show you. We can cut it back, and I'll show you what I was talking about. We'll cut it back here where it attaches to the engine. Uh, probably your hose in the, is in the way, but there's a little ear on the uh, Yeah, I'll swing around the other side block. and get that once this is so, off. Yeah. You just want to watch with that little ear because the ears are kind of delicate. So you can actually rip them if you're not careful. So you can see how that will get caught on everything. So it works best sometimes to kind of bend it back and get it oh, out yeah. of the way. And then you're going to need your uh, one inch socket. And make sure your ratchet's set on the right direction for loosening. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. Yeah, sometimes you might have to use a uh, a wrench. It might work better because of the clearance issues with yep. everything. Or a short. And this socket. is the short filter. Yeah. I don't know if the light combing takes a long filter for this. Um, I don't know. It might be acceptable you have to look at the uh, manual and see. Some of them it is, some of it isn't. Um, what works good sometimes to do is just to use your wrench with a six-point socket uh -huh. to loosen it. Well, so once you get a little bit loose, like now you can see it's just turning real easy. Yep, six-point, always the best wrench to buy. I know the 12 points come in handy, but boy, if you don't want to strip something out with a cheap wrench, yep. use a good six-point. That's correct. Like this is a 
good six point socket. There you go. So you can use a 12 point on there if the filter is not too tight. Yeah, for um, you probably changed the oil last. <laughs> maybe, I might have. So. See, I got to loosen up that I can spin it off by hand. Yep. So now what you're going to want to watch here is when spinning it off, is once you get it to a certain point, it's going to start gripping the oil. That's why I was trying to use the catch thing. Hopefully I have it positioned right. If not, we're going to get oil on the floor. So I didn't make rags and cat litter. Yep. And degreaser. Yeah, that's definitely the truth. So you gotta remember the filter holds a bunch of oil on it. That light's fine. So when you get it spun back enough, you'll be able to tilt it up and hopefully you can get it tilted up quick enough. And you wanna try not to drop the filter. So if you drop it, it will make a mess. So then you can just wiggle it out. And then you can set it somewhere to drain. Now, Excellent. Now the filter's off and as you can see, it's still dripping out of the engine now into our catch thing. So we can let that drip for, for a few minutes if we want. Let some of the oil that's up there okay. kind of drain out a little bit. So okay. while we're doing that, we'll get the next filter prepped. Five, five, five thousand, five hundred and fifty. So five, five, zero. Three, three fives and a zero. Yes. Yeah, because I just checked as soon as I shut down yesterday. I was like, ooh, I'm one hour over my oil change. Okay. So, now what we got is let's prep the new filter. I'm and sorry. Watch. I can show you from that side if you want. Hey, I can do that. So, what we're going to do with the filter is we're going to fill in the blanks that we're going to put today's date. We're gonna put his current tack time on there, uh -huh. the aircraft registration. Yep. And for this one, since it's neither or, you can leave that blank or you can put a line through it. Usually I'd, I'll do a line or something like that because there's no left or right engines. There's only one. <laughs> a center. So, yeah. Yep. So. Today is the 26th. Yeah. Yep. 326. I mean, it's nice to fill it out so that way if it, you know, you take the plane somewhere and somebody else does the oil, they can see when it was last done. Exactly, without having the log book sitting right in your hand. Yep, yep. So now the next thing is, is depending on if you're using a Champion filter or a Tempest, there's different uh, install instructions per filter. The Tempest filters, you install dry, no lubricant on the O-ring, and their torque is different. Their torque, I think, is lower, I believe. You'll have to check that. Um, which isn't a big deal because we're installing a Champion. So with the Champion filters, they do have all the torque right down on the filter. Excellent. If you need to know. So it tells you what to do and how to install it, what the torques are. So their first thing is to dry everything. Step two is to put a lubricant on it. Uh, they recommend Dow Corning or equivalent using engine oil, etc., etc., depending on what you have available at the time. Then the step three, they say, is to you know, install the filter, twist it on. And then step four is torque it 16 to 18 foot pounds. Uh, step five is check for leaks. And step six is doing safety wire. And I guess their step- Which is my cross. <laughs> is do not puncture, I guess. Yeah, that would make sense. I guess that's what it is. I mean, it's a picture of the filter with a hole in the side of it, it looks like. So I guess they're saying do not puncture. So what we're gonna do is to make our life a little bit easier, we're gonna use some engine oil on the O-ring. Yep. And then we're gonna go ahead and install the filter, torque it, and we're gonna safety wire it now, which is a little bit different than their steps. But that way we don't forget to safety wire it. Okay. Um, and then we'll pull the airplane out later and we can run it up, check it for leaks at a future time. Yep. So, um, big thing is when doing all this stuff is to always make sure that you check for leaks because you don't wanna find a leak when you're up in the air. No. It's not uh, 
not fun. And you really just can't pull over and stop and go to the auto parts store and fix it. So we're gonna go ahead and, uh, before I do that. You need a rag to clean that? Yeah, I got one over here. There's a couple paper towels. You could use those or the blue rags, whatever we'll, you choose. We'll use a paper towel. You need to get a roll on the blue rag. Ah, they're all going in the wash. Yeah. I, Hopefully not our wash, Mary. <laughs> we'll just we'll, we'll trash them. Yeah. So I just wipe this so that way when I pull the oil catch thing out, I don't have a bunch of oil to rub on stuff. Um, putting the catch can in there is, of course, optional, you know, depending on what you want to do. But in this case, I'll show you, we got probably a quarter of a cup of oil in there. Not much. Other airplanes are a lot more, and especially if, let's say, you just ran it and you're working on a hot, hot engine. Uh, generally speaking, draining from a hot engine would be good because the oil is more runny. But we're, we have time to let the airplane sit and drain for a while. So you can... Show the oil in oh, there. yeah, got a little bit in the catch cam. Mm -hmm. yep. Cool. Uh, we can set that, I guess, over there somewhere. Where it won't get knocked over. So. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish wiping this just to make sure it's all dry. I don't have any old oil. It's possible. I haven't charged for that. But I, I don't think I've used it enough. Yeah, your battery's good. I hit the. I must have hit something to kill it on the phone. Yeah, you probably hit the power button on it. That's the only thing I don't care for is where they have the power button. So, it's in a very awkward place. I can't really get a good angle where I... Oh, I might be able to show you that. Right in here. That's where the oil filter screws on, and he was just cleaning that surface that it's going to bond with the... Uh, gasket that's on the filter yep. after he gives it a little doobie doobie yep that's what i got just a little bit of uh the oil we're using yeah um, like i said you can use the oil or you can use uh dow corning number four i've used both and i haven't had any issues with either so they both work pretty good um as he was showing you where the, the filter base sits uh depending on which filter you want you use for example like with the 110s if you have a 110 always make sure that that center piece comes out with the filter because sometimes they may get stuck in there. I've wow. never really had it happen, but I have been told it can happen. This just screws into the filter, so it could potentially unscrew. Um, so if you're having an issue getting the filter back on, check that. Which is unlike an automotive filter because that threaded part is there. Yep, yep. Now, depending on which filter you have, the 110 has this threaded part. Some of the other filters do not. The uh, so reference your filter and it varies engine by engine. Some filters have the threaded part that stay in the engine. Yeah, instead uh, of pulling the cowl, I just went and researched the Lycoming yep. IO three six or three yeah three sixty. Yeah. Yep. And um, the other thing you could always do too is depending on your filter, you might even be able to reference your uh, annual. Because I think oh, yeah. the annual I put a note in there. Yeah, I think I checked that too just to make sure what yeah. I found. Yeah. So generally speaking, when you do an oil change, it's good practice to put in there, install a new filter, such and such part number. So not everybody does that, but it's, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna make up a sticker to put in my engine log as soon as I get home. Yep. There she goes. Yep. So sometimes you got to lift up, like I'm lifting up a little bit on this oil line just to keep the Give pressure Give a little clearance. Off. Yep. So I can get it on there straight. So now I got it started. It's screwed down where it's touching. I'm going to grab my foot wrench now. That's the only thing. I don't have one anymore. I got rid of my torque wrench that I had when I was working on cars. Okay. But that's an easy. Yeah. If you're going to be doing your own oil changes a lot, you can actually buy aircraft screw sells a torque wrench meant for oil filters okay it's a basically like a big wrench it's uh it's a basically a big open wrench and to put on the filter and it's set up so a dual purpose torque. filter wrench and torque yeah i don't know if i don't want to break a filter loose with it but um it's meant for torquing them so it's it's actually a good one to get because it's low clearance and it was 18? Yeah, uh, 16 to 18. 16 to 18, okay. Yep, yep. 
So. Now, not on all engines can you get a torque wrench in there, so sometimes you have to use that low profile one that I was talking about. So I'll, go, I'll go look that up. Yeah, it's like a hundred bucks if you wanted to get just a dedicated one. Um, but for a hundred bucks, you can always buy a 3 8 drive torque wrench and use it for other stuff. So. That might come in handy for when I do plugs and everything else too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna back it up just a little bit more and double check one more time. There's the click. Yep, there we go. So we are torqued. That'll wick our off there. Okay. So now we got that torqued. So now the next step will be dealing with TTR. Which I, that's the part I really need to learn. Yes, this is, everybody hates safety wire. So, um, now. We got this torque. Now, when you safety wire this, you want to make sure when you safety wire it that it will keep the filter from spinning off. Right. So, a good reference to even think about that is you can grab your wrench and you can think about it if you're not sure. Like right now, my ratchet's still in the off position. And I do this sometimes too because I get overthinking and I confuse myself. So, we want to make sure when we, we safety wire it since off will be going this direction towards the pilot side. Yep. We want to make sure when we attach it to that point there that we go down to one of the lugs that would be going to the pilot side. Okay. Because if we go to one on the co-pilot side, it will give it the ability to rotate. And if we go to this one that's straight up in line with it, it will be a neutral safety wire which then it will still be able to turn a little bit either direction. All right, so come on this left side, so if it tries to loosen to the right, it can't, all Correct. The, it's already tight on this side. Yep, we want it all, so it will be already tight. And so. as I've watched on some videos, there's an AP, um, I forget the link, but he has a lot of good stuff, and he was showing some of the way people safety tied or wire tied it. <laughs> Yeah. They wire tied it the wrong direction so it could loosen up, mm -hmm. but it had to be wire tied through uh, some bolt. I forget it was yep. some bolt on some sensor or near something. Okay. So if the filter loosened it up, it also bolt. backed yeah. that off too. So yep. it was like a double no no. Yeah, that's definitely possible um, because some of the nuts, like this nut up here, is not drilled for it, but this is a, I think, a temp temp one up here. I think this is temp. It might be pressure. I forget which one's which. I, pressure is usually a, has a solid line, so that's probably oil temp up there. Um, so with that being said, some of these nuts are drilled and they probably safety wired it from that nut. Incorrect. Except it was all backwards. Yep. Yep. One would have loosened the other one off. Yep. Yep. So even after you wire tired, I would probably just do the little mental exercise. Okay, if this turns this way. Yep. Yeah, that's why I like taking my wrench and yep, I go, which same. way am I going to loosen it with how it's sitting? Yep. Because it will get you sometimes, especially if you're working upside down above you, it will, <laughs> it will screw you up. And, you know, being a general, you know, doing the stuff here, generally, you know, a, a pilot will not be doing that, but, you know. If, I see you're going through that, that little tab, which I don't yep. see. Where is that tab again? It is on the aft of this. Um, I can't see it in the water. Let's see here. Yeah. Yeah. We'll rotate around here. Okie dokie. There we go. You can kind of see the little tab between. There it is. Okay. So you can see see where the little tab is right in there that I went to. Okay. This is the tab I was talking about earlier. So when you cut the safety wire off there, be careful not to pull that because that little tab's very brittle and they do break. Right. If you do break it, then you have to bring the safety wire around this nut and safety wire to the to the nut. I guess not the do best that way. I don't have to. Yeah, but they they break with okay, time. So you it's came thin metal. To the to this side. Yep. Okay. So it's very thin metal, so you can break it if you pull too hard on it. Um, it happens. So. Um, speaking about safety wire, I'll show you guys a good safety wire here. This was done by the people that overhauled the servo. 
but you can see if this one loosens this way, it's gonna pull this one tight. And if that one loosens, it's gonna pull this one tight. So it has nowhere to go. Correct. Yep, this would be a good example of how to be properly safety wired. And you can also see what they did with the tail. So they bent the tail over, so I'm not getting stabbed on the tail if I rub up against it. So a lot of people like to just bend the tail straight up and then you have a hook. And <laughs> sometimes they don't bend them, squeeze them tight like that. And that will actually act like a fishing hook and stab into you and rip you open. Yeah, nobody so, needs stitches. Yeah, nope. And the other thing to always remember is when working in here is always watch zip ties. Like this zip tie was cut properly. It's nice and smooth. So yeah, but if they have a cut. flange, that'll cut you like a razor too. Yeah, like this one here will actually get you, even though it's up just a little bit, but it's still got a little raise to it. So you got to always watch them because there's, as you can see, a ton of zip ties all throughout here. So they will cut you. Uh, most of these look pretty good. Um, I don't really see any because a lot of people like to cut them to a point. And the ones that are cut to a point work very, very well for cutting you open. So. For abusing skin? Yes. Okay. Now, this is what I really need to learn. So you came through from the right side yeah, to the left? Yeah, you can come through whatever side. If I was working on that side, I'd probably come through the other way. It doesn't really matter which way you run it through, per se, as long as you run it through it, if that makes sense. So we're going to pull it through so we have enough safety wire. We want to make sure we have enough to go down to where we want, run it through what we're safety wiring to, and be able to twist it afterwards. So we're going to run it down to, to that bottom tab. The bottom tab there. If I could get back over on the thing instead of jumping okay. around like a maniac. Yeah, it's, it takes practice sometimes doing it this way. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go to there. So that's, I'm just using my finger as a reference about where I need to put my pliers on. So, I'm going to take my pliers, and I'm going to clip it where I was, under my finger, and uh, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move this around a little bit because I can't get a good pull on that. I'm going to keep my finger about where it needed to be, and I'm just going to pull this back up this way so I can get a good twist on it. Being down there, I really can't get a good pull or twist on the wire to get it pulled tight. So that was your mark right there. Yep. So now we can pull this wire tight. Make sure that we don't have anything that's going to be <coughs> caught in it when you twist it. So nothing's pinched between no other the two wires. wires. Or... Yeah. So we can go ahead and twist it. And that's it. Just pull it. Yep. Give a couple twists on there and look and see how it's twisting. So that's... That's pretty good there. Um, there is, if you look at the AC 4313, I think, or the FARS, um, it does have a number of twists per inch you're supposed to have. Um, I do not remember what it is off the top of my head, um, but there is a number of twists per inch. So you can always look that up as reference. Um, this is one of the things I can look at that and tell you that looks like that's about right because I've been doing doing it for a while. So, so it's one of the things you learn with time. And if you over twist, if you over twist it, you'll it probably, damage. You'll probably end up breaking the safety wire. Okay. It'll snap. That's what happens most of the time if you over twist. Um, it'll just snap it, and then you'll have to start again, which isn't a big deal. So. Oh, I don't even like that. Yep. So now you can see when we safety it, we're pretty much going to be where we need to be. So, yeah. Uh, go ahead and. Got to feed those through that tab. Yeah. So, there we go. And when you do it, you want to try to get the wire that runs over top, per se. Uh huh. When you're doing it, like with this, you can see this one's going to be below. Yes. This one's going to be over top. So if you run the one that's over top through it, it's gonna help pull it tighter to the filter house here, I guess is the best way to say it. Well, so they don't both go through and loop. You gotta do yeah. another wire tie or another. Yep, do another twist. You run twist, yeah. one wire through it. Um, sometimes you're gonna to have to bend it. Like on the end, I got a little bend Just on trying it. trying to feed it through. Yeah. The other thing you could do on the filters if you wanted to 
is I've seen other people bend the tabs up. I'm not a big fan of bending the tab up. I, I, uh, <laughs> one sec. You're good. It happens. You turned it off again. It's still recording. Okay. I just made everybody really dizzy. <laughs> yeah, it happens. I'm letting Gary use my, uh, my new tripod. So... DJI tripod and I have one that's not that old but this is totally different with the magnetic clip it's excellent yeah. yeah this thing that tripod I just bought a little while ago so okay so you pull that in through there tight yep there we go oh that's even better yep so we pulled that in there through yeah if I can spit out the English language today it'd be really good um so we pulled that tight I'm gonna grab the wire that runs through there and just give it another tug to make sure I can get it as tight as I can okay so as you can see the wire will be nice and yep. tight and I don't have a bunch of extra space here nope um not a, it's wired tied yeah. right to the tab yep right to the tab or twisted right to the tab so I that's say. ideally what you want if you got space there you can add a couple more twists if needed um if not then well you're supposed to start again. Some people will take it off and, you know, untwist it a little bit, but. Now you lock them back on again? Yep, yep. And uh, what you want to do, instead of going the direction you rotated it before, you want to go to the opposite. Um, my pliers have a selector, but I'm going to show you guys as if I don't have a selector on mine. So most safety wire pliers, such as this pair here, only has one direction. So when you pull it, that's going to be your first direction of rotation. Okay. And then when you do it for the next twist, you're going to have to do what I'm going to show you guys here, where like if I pull this, it wants to rotate that way. You can do it that way, but that's not really how you're supposed to. You're supposed to have it the opposite direction. So you're just going to twist it by hand. That's what yeah. I would have to do with the pair I got. Yep. Yeah, because yep. I didn't buy the most expensive tool, <laughs> whatever they had on uh, aircraft spruce. They work just fine. So there's nothing wrong with them. I got some bigger pairs that are just like that from aircraft spruce for doing heavier safety wire. So, so there we go. We got it twisted. You may see now when I re release, it's a little bit loose. Uh -huh. I could always pull it up and twist it a little bit more to get it tighter. What I'm gonna do is just cut my extra chunk off at the minute, just so I can get that out of the way. I'm gonna put that in a safe spot. So it doesn't end up down in the engine bay or anywhere like that. So, so what we can do, sometimes you can get in here and give it another little twist, which is easier said than done, if you really want to get it tight, tight. And again, you want to make sure you don't twist it too much because you can break the safety wire. And then you got to start again. So. It'd be all right. This will be fine. You don't need it super tight. It's on not this going thing. anywhere. Yeah, it's really just as a safety to hold it. So we want to cut that down closer a little bit. Actually, I probably cut a little bit short. Would like it a little bit longer, but that's okay. Actually, yeah, yeah they cut it. As you guys can see, when you cut it too short, what happens it, it is un you can it unwound. Yeah, you can actually grab it and you can pull it and pull it off. And that's that's what happens when you cut it too short as a prime example here. So what we're gonna have to do here is I'm just gonna go through it and re it again. It happens. So, so this was a prime example of what not to do when doing it. It's all right, this is what so, this is all about, a teaching moment. Yep, it, it happens to the best of us. So um, one thing that's always good to have is a pair of long dikes because it makes getting the safety wire off easily. So I got a pair of long handled dikes, which works really well for doing this stuff. So you got some serious reach with that. Yes, that's exactly it. So, so we're gonna get a piece of safety wire long enough. So we're gonna run I it should, through. Uh, I should stop this and then I can try it. Yeah, if you want. All right, let me stop this. All right, just to finish up the video that Steve and I did yesterday, uh, when we broke so that I could do the wire tie, do a try, 
put the wire in, gave it the spin with the pliers that I bought from, I think it was Aircraft Spruce. I'll put a link to all the tools that I got. Wrapped it through, carefully selected the overwire as opposed to the underwire, and then did the safety wire twist the opposite direction of what I did out here. Clipped it, bent it back, it's secure. So that's done. The other part I wanted to do is give a quick peek at the filter, which we also did. So we'll go around and take a look at that. Again, the tools that I bought for this, I'll do a, or provide a link down below. Man, you can hear the wind blowing. You can hear the uh, hangers squealing. Let's take a quick look at this. We did find some carbon. Other than that, it was pretty clean. Ah, there's a tiny little speck. See a little speck right there? Thought I did. So it came out really good. Nice and clean, a little bit of carbon. So I can't complain. Okay, that should wrap it up from here. I am going to, it's too windy today and too chilly, plus I'm working on videos, doing some editing, and a blog post for my Vero Beach trip. So tomorrow I will come over, once the batteries are charged, tug the plane out, do a run up for a leak test, and then uh, push it back in and button everything up so we should be good to go. All right, thanks for watching, and Steve, thank you so much for all your help. And uh, the, the main fear I had was not screwing up the safety wire, and he walked me through that. Appreciate his help and his expertise. And um, his link to his uh, YouTube channel will be down below, King Dead Lego. So please check his page out, and he might share this and post it on his webpage also. But that's his choice. Okay, thanks again, everybody, for watching. And Steve, special thanks for helping me just get past that little, I don't want to screw up the safety wire ties. All right, everybody, take care.